The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman, Dow's down 187 on this uh, sixth day of October Thursday, and we're looking at uh, down 193 at 30,064, or 84, we're looking at the S&P down 23 at 37.99. Now what's really important is, you see this pattern here, this arch formation, a spiral up to a peak E in the Chapman wave, going out of this rectangle, narrow rectangle formation that was in place for a long time this morning, and then suddenly pops above it, and then it turns down and makes a beautiful uh, price symmetry, the bar symmetry, where the low that was made at uh, on the one minute chart at 9.28 in the E mini pops up to that peak at uh, 38.11.50 at 9.44. And then comes back down and breaks the support that's been in place uh, for an hour about. And then it takes it out. And look, in the same price, and exactly, I was busy drawing this uh, before the news. Uh, but as the news was coming on, I, I rushed it a little bit. So I didn't get the exact, I didn't draw it correctly. I just corrected the drawing I should have put in, which was from the low, that trough D at 9.28 to the high that was made at 9.44. Look at the symmetry. The exact plumb line from that high came down and took it out. Where? At 10.02. It went to 37.71.50. And, uh, <clears throat> and that took out with a beautiful bar symmetry. In other words, the number of bars to the upside matched exactly the number of bars to the downside. And what's so fascinating about, I, I love to look at the market as if to say, okay, what's your core situation? What, 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 what are we really looking at? Well, what we're really looking at are just three chart formations, a straight line up, straight line down, a cup formation, that could be a V-shaped formation, but basically going from one level down and then coming back to it, how you can gauge the technical uh, veracity on the move back is important, but the same with the arch formation, a uh, straight line down, and if we, uh, it forms an H pattern, it makes a straight line down, arches over at a peak A or B, reverses, because if it takes out that left side low, it can go quite a bit lower. And on the right, you can see a combination of one and two, which is a green line, straight line up, and then it makes the cup formation, or it could be a V-shaped formation. How it breaks that left side high is really important. So three patterns, straight up, straight down, cup, arch, and over and over and over. It's like the fractal of the market, whether it's looking at a one-minute chart or whether you're looking at multi-decade charts, the fractal is the same. Why? Because the market at this point, maybe in 20 years time, it won't be the same because of the uh, computerization, the automation of everything. But at this particular point, every single uh, move in every single bar is a price point and reflection of human emotion and a price point frozen in time until it moves, even if it's in seconds. So we've gone to a, 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 a trough a leg D, which is maybe going to make a trough D as the MACD tries to turn. Stochastic is not good at 9%. The unbalanced volume is attempting to turn. But this pink nine-period exponential moving average, you need to see a bigger move. So I'm talking about very near term. Let's go to the um, charts to look at what's happening here. It was spiked up to a peak E in this beautiful cup formation in the 10-minute uh, chart. Now I can put a down arrow. Uh, to tell you the truth, I would like a bit of a consolidation today. Uh, we went long the Dow uh, prior to the opening on Monday. We added to it um, yesterday. I'm not sure how that's going to, at this point, it's still up, uh, up uh, but I'm not sure whether that's going to remain the case. Uh, and we, this is very interesting. I bought for the... Um, for subscribers to my opening call, the SMHs, the semiconductors, lead markets up and down. There was just enough strength with that turnaround from Friday's low of 185.11 to a Monday's gap up and 
nice move to the upside and then a further gap up on Tuesday pulls back fills a little bit of the gap and I wanted us to buy the low uh, any low that was uh, made yesterday uh, via uh, a three times long position ironically enough we bought it and it just stopped us out I had a really tight just over two percent stop on a three times long that's crazy I mean that's really tight but we had it and then it closed up it, it moved over ten percent higher but that's fine. I, at least I know that this is now a little bit in play. Finally, the semiconductors are showing just enough strength to say, if this is a counter trend rally, you will need the SMHs, which are down $1.28 to 200.66. You will need them to continue the move up together with, and I'm going to put it here, the IAI, which is the broker dealer index or ETF. <clears throat> Made a peak B, went from the 84, spikes up into over into the 91s. It's now 90.13. We actually long from way back, 45, uh, back in uh, 2020, uh, March the 23rd, uh, 24th, the day after the low. But at the same time, uh, this is really important. I want to see the broker-dealer index move higher. I want to see the semis move. These have been the laggards. So unless that's going to happen, Basically, what we're looking at is this is an extremely oversold condition that worked its way off a 1500 point move to the upside. You've got to expect that it, unless this is the low, which I don't believe it is, a the low would have said a gap up today and we would have been on our way to much higher prices. This is just saying very oversold condition. Um, very near term, became very overbought this morning or going to the close yesterday. Just needs to work that off. But there are still so many shorts. There are still so many people just throwing, what's the expression, the baby out of the bathwater. I'm not sure how that ever came about. But anyway, throwing everything out. And I can tell you over the weekend, I, I know uh, from firsthand experience uh, with uh, with some people uh, that I'm you know that I that I know pretty well, who were just shaking their heads, didn't, didn't even want to discuss anything. Just said, "Oh my God!" I, I looked at my portfolio for the first time in a while, and ah, oh. well, um, that that especially when people stop looking at their portfolios, that's where you start to get to the to an area where the. Um, the market is in such a state that any inflection to the upside can build momentum, but the main course, the main tide has to be overcome. And that main tide in the both the weekly, let me just go back to the S&P now for a moment, the monthly chart says that, yes, this is good. We've made it. So far, October's at a higher low than September. We could have an inside bar in October. But this pattern, as we were speaking to George in Boston over the last week, the pattern in the S&P is that very often over a period of 10, 12 years, we only go down trough A or trough B and then spike and start new highs. But when we do go to a C, be careful. Back in October of 2011 at 10.77 and 74, that was only a C, and then we saw it. You move up to 21.34, but most of the time when you get to a C, you can't go to a D and even an E. So we have to be a bit careful. I'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and DSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I was just in the middle of this, let's just right, get right to a question on SLB, which is Schlumberger, uh, oil uh, service stock. This is uh, Schlumberger Limited, uh, trading at 41.77, up 21 cents. This, uh, I, you know what I like to do? I always say that I want to be a little conservative. This looks like a brand new leg A, but just uh, to be, let me just put it this way here. Let's make sure that that's a high. I think that's a, I think that's a C in the, in the in the weekly chart. Yeah. So normally I would go E slash A. But because the technicals are so strong, I'm going to do this is something I've started doing for a little while now. I hope it's not confusing. But my preference is to actually say this looks like a brand new A. It's done everything. Look, the, the stochastics come from a low the on balance volume, V-shaped pattern. The stochastics now at 79%, almost at 80%. The MACD is good. Nine is over the 14. So I'm going to do this. I think A slash E. My preference is to think of it as an A right now, even if I thought of it as an E. Why? Because the previous peak uh, A, the, the, the start of the move came from a lower low and because of that and this keeps going to d look there's one peak d uh going into the late july pulls back august begins a brand new a b c d i had an alternative count there as well e slash b and it went to a d and now it's pulled back this is almost a one to not a one to one but it's greater than a one to one to the downside started a brand new move i should technically put in an up arrow because it's broken to a new recovery high but instead i'm just going to go Trough A, trough B, make that a trough C, and I'll put a plus sign underneath it to say that that at this particular point is taking the place of an up arrow because I don't have enough evidence yet. Stochastic needs to close nicely over 80%. Price needs to pull back and have another high. And then I, I'll say, okay, there's a chance that it can make that double hump on, on the uh, uh, MACD, which says that you've got to think that this could be an F with a sharp decline, but not if the stochastic's holding very well. That will become a B. That says that Schlumberger, together with, let me just see, the XLE. Yes, it's the same thing. The XLE is a very strong move at this point. I'm calling it a gray leg B because I haven't got a confirmation that it is a buy signal. Actually, it's so close to a buy signal, but I'm not going to call it a buy signal just yet. 
And I suspect the moment I give it a buy signal, almost immediately I'll upgrade that to a buy mode because it's uh, it's gone. The XL is the S&P Select Energy Spider Fund. Look at that. There's the Chapman Falling Axe. Beautiful breakout to the upside and a close yesterday above it. So far, it's above it today. I, I think that, that the target I would have for the XLN, I mentioned it to my subscribers this morning. It's on our watch list. Uh, we, we might put into a, a, a buy at any moment or one of, the, one of the stocks in the sector. You see, when the XLE at 81 is acting so well, my preference is to go for a low price stock that's acted really well. It looks like the same chart pattern, but you can get it for either a single digit or just a, in the teens. And you're going to get a nicer percentage gain if, if it does continue to parallel something like the XLE. So uh, Saint-Berger is trading at uh, half the price at 41.76. I like it. So you only asked me if I'd show you the chart. But I'm going to say, because it's on my list, I, I think energy is starting to perk up. If you look at the crude oil, look at this. Crude oil. Uh, has come off the low. It's not fantastic. It's at 88 right now. This is the continuous contract. But if it can start to trade inside what was that big rectangle and arch formation that it failed, if it can, uh, if it can hold there into next week above 86, it's at 88.05. Preferably close somewhere around or inch a week if it can hit 92 and then close at about 90. That would say that the target I would have is that 98. So 97.21 high of, of the week of the 2nd of September, that's where I'd expect to find a lot of resistance. But the way things are lining up right now, I don't think we can rule out energy uh, and, and the oil stocks as having the potential to, to really move up yet again. So uh, it was, they were... The chart pattern from these bars that we were looking at in crude oil were really bad for a long time. The XLE... Um, has pretty much the opposite. It's made a cup formation. Now it's going in for the second cup formation. Look at the weekly chart, the Chapman Wave inside track. Propellant zone held beautifully. Uh, it, uh, it nicked it just intraday last week, but it closed at the at the upper green line. Now it's closing above. And we're, we're only... Um, well, we are into Thursday, and we'll see whether or not the, the L, which is just appearing in the nine-period moving average, about to close over the 14-period moving average in the weekly chart, is going to give a confirmation because yesterday's action had that. I think I mentioned it yesterday. There was an L appearing, which is long, uh, which says that uh, the nine-period has moved over the 14-period moving average. So the stochastic's still lagging a little bit. So let me go back to SLB, and I'm going to say I want to do – I was looking, and and, and um, one of our dinners had mentioned a very low price um, service stock or service, and that's acting very well. So I think there's a way to play this with putting – at this point, I still say conserve as much money as you can. Anything you're putting to work, try to make it as beneficial as possible. In other words – if it's if it's if it's rally if you bought it and it's running nicely, make sure you don't take a loss unless it's part of your stop your initial stop position. But even more importantly, um, just keep garnering some cash. We want to build up a cash position um, as much as we can, and so that we can be building up our kitty when we finally get that major buy signal whenever it comes in. So that's really important. So yes, SLB is acting really well, and most importantly, if it closes between now and Monday. Below uh, 40.20 to 39.75. If it closes under that, it says, yeah, maybe it's just for the moment it's a one-time thing and now it has to digest gains. If it pulls back even just a tad, what, whatever happens, if by Monday, Thursday, if by Monday at this time or sometime Monday afternoon into Tuesday morning, it has broken and it's just touched 42.75, I think that would be really good short-term action. Say so, yes, I like it. I don't know if that I don't know if that was your question, but in the meantime, I've got it in there. So yes, yes, something very interesting. Uh, so Duffy says, look at rig. Yes, rig is what I was kind of referring to just a moment ago. I had it in my newsletter as something we've been watching for a couple of days now. A uh, fabulous move up. It's gone from the around about the 230 area. It's trading at 3.11. That's what I'm talking about. It's a different chart pattern. Trans Ocean Limited, offshore drilling, oil and gas. 
Um, it's acting very well, but this is a little bit risky. I've got Fibonacci numbers and all that, uh, 161, it just uh, rallied. No, I, the way I'm looking at it right now is that it is in play. I don't like this arch formation unless almost immediately, which it's doing, it starts to move and it can close more than halfway into the whole pattern that we were looking at. So there's 320, today's high is 317. If on a weekly basis it can close, oh, I don't want to say 320, I'd even say 347 to 350. If it can get there, that would be the kind of sign where the arch formation, let me draw it in, this arch formation, you see, the, see how it just keeps making arches and now it's starting to make a semicircle to the upside. If this can continue, then we finally got the pattern that says, successful dreaded H pattern can turn into a very good cup formation. So yes, rig is acting well at 3.11, up 11 sets. I'll be back, Dow's down 213, S&P's down 26, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Uh, there was a question. I thought this was a great question because it, it didn't have to apply to this particular stock, but it applies to a lot of things right now. Someone in the den, I, can't, I, I didn't uh, check to see who it was, said they have uh, some shares of Saba, which is Cassava Sciences uh, Biotech Company. And it had a huge spike to a peak D. Uh, just Was it just under 50 or did it hit 50? At 51.59 on the 22nd. Let me just type that in because this is very, very relevant to what I wanted to say. 51 point. 52, I think I said, yeah. So, and then it pulls back pretty sharply, but within that, it's the flagpole high, then it's got the rectangle, and then it's got the arch formation. But look how beautifully, since the, it broke out above, back in August, above uh, the 19 level, 
into the uh, 14 period moving average and then the nine period exponential moving average around about August 16th crossed positive, it's had these big spikes to a peak. D, then it pulls back and had a rectangle formation. And look, there's a rectangle formation. And it went, the rule of the rectangle formation for me is the wide rectangle formation. If it pulls back from the flagpole, comes back, starts to make higher highs and higher lows, it can go to a peak, a, a peak C or a D just underneath the previous high, right on or just above. Then you've got to be careful because if it pulls back more than halfway of the entire bar, that, that flagpole bar, in this case the gap up bar, it could go all the way back to the rectangle low. Instead, what it did is it held the nine period moving average. It held the 14 period moving average, which was lowered down because of the green nine period moving average is very positive. And then it powered again from that peak C, which was at, oh, let me just give you a number so we know we're talking apples to apples. 34.87 was the high of the 17th of August. Then it pulls back to the 24 ish area around about oh, 23.50 starts walking the, the 14 period moving average, uses that as a springboard, and then it bounces. And what does it go to? Remember the high on the 17th of August was uh, 34.87. What it goes to? 35.58. So it goes just a tad above, pulls back, and walks the 14 period moving average as a spectacular candle on the 20th of September, 29.70 low, 39.73 high. This is all to do with both short covering and the fact that they have a particular uh, a stage at the different stages of, of acceptance in the, uh, uh, in the protocol that they have for their being a biotech stock and the Alzheimer's uh, and other, I guess, and other areas of diseases that they're, look, they're studying and working on. And then it jump, bounces all the way to 51.52 in leg D, pulls back. But the low of that candle becomes a support level. It makes a great peak A, great peak B, makes the arch formation, holds the 14-period moving average. And today it has a fabulous move. It's up 12.29% at 46.05. So the question is, I have, I have a certain number of shares. Um, what do I do? My my, The way I look at this always is, if you get to a point where you say, what do I do now? It means there's a moment of uncertainty. So the best thing is so that you can sleep well at night. Why not take a little bit off right here? As you're saying, what do I do now? Take a little bit off. It's at 46.05. I don't know when you got in. So you, you must have a very nice profit because you've been in for a little while. And then all you need to do is raise the stop on some part of it. Right, it could be a one point stop, could be a very tight stop, could be. I mean, if it's acting so well now, you just say, Hey, you look at the 120 minute chart, let's go there. So, this is a nice thing to do. I, I, I do this with subscribers. We, we exit on the way up, we start to lighten up just a little bit. We try to keep a nice core position, but most importantly, we're doing money management in a market like this. You can't just buy and hold, yeah, you can, I suppose, if you're very lucky, but mostly. You, you, other things can happen. So the low that was made on the 120-minute chart uh, at 13.30 on the 3rd of 39.70, uh, yesterday went to 39.65. Uh, 39.70, I said, right? Yeah, so it broke it. So this is a brand new leg. Uh, a, I think it is in the 120-minute chart. So that's all I'm saying is, you can, you can make any decision you want, but the way I look at it is this is a gift. Did you know yesterday that it would be up $4.65? Probably not. It's a gift. So take that gift and say thank you very much. And now I'm going to handle the trade by putting in a stop because I was thinking maybe I should get out. So I'm going to put a stop in fairly tight, and then I'll try to keep a call because this power move, when it has a power move like this, very often for two days after that, it can move up again and then it pulls back sharply. But the pattern of the rectangle says if it keeps making higher highs and higher lows, it can go towards just under, right on or just above the previous high. That would be 51.52. You don't have to wait for that. You just have the trading stop and make sure you're absolutely making money no matter what because of the big move that it's had today. So that's just one way to do it. Okay, and a question came up. Oh, where was the question? Okay, I have to just move over to uh, this. Here we go. Give me one second. I just need to read this. Um, yes, so 
when I was looking at Slumberjay in the Tiger YouTube, Exxon was mentioned. I was looking at this yesterday. This is, look, the high that was made at peak C right here at on the 29th of 8, XOM is, is what we're looking at. The high that was made at 101.56, we're trading right now at 100.41. The high today so far is 101.14. So um, 101.56, just keep keep that in mind. The low that started the move, and this is for the chap waivers out there. You see the low that, that was on July the 16th or 17th, 14th, at 80.69. Let me just type that in so we know what we're looking at here. 80.19 uh, or 16, uh, it was that, 814. 22 it went to peak a pulls back peak b gaps up into peak b and then plummets down but it's still that's just starting point 80.16 just above the 200 period moving average so this is still in in action so it goes to gray peak a gray peak b because it's underneath that previous blue peak b because the stochastic went over 80 percent look how it pulled back though then the stochastic everything about it said that that peak c had the look of a d and it pulled back very sharply from that 101 level. It was a 56 or something. And it plummets to the 200 period moving average. I mean, that is, I mean, that's a pretty decent size pullback, 20% or something. It goes from 101 down to, yeah, 83.89. And now there's a single leg up, but you've, your obligation in the Chapman Wave is to always count each successively higher peak or trough. Uh, in this case, B, and that went to also a C down there. And that's a trough C. This is a gray A. And now what I've got is I call this a gray B. But the moment, because it is above 80.16, I always show you this. I, I, the circle usually means something else. But in this particular case, I just want to show you right here. This is your starting point. This is where you're counting each successively peak. And until you take it down, uh, take it out at 80.15, 80.16 16 was the low. This is in a buy. This is still making higher highs and higher lows. And therefore, the last high was C. That means I'm calling this gray B, but the mom only because I'm counting each peak. But the moment it takes out 101.56 by one penny, that gray changes immediately. And it turns into a D because that's your last major latch to the chapter wave. This is subsidiary because the law was 80.60, so I'm just counting this successively higher B. So gray B. So yes, this is acting extremely well, just like we were looking at XLE. And look at that monthly chart. I'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. Uh, yeah, I mentioned uh, it's in the dance that XIM walking through a B point with massive volume. Uh, uh, baseball says, yeah, I'm looking at it differently. I, I've got a technique that I call the Chapman Wave one-to-one -one parallel extension. And basically what it does is it identifies what I call almost a straight line move. And then I do a measured count from the bottom to the top. But the whole thing about this particular technique is that you want to do the move at the same angle, the diagonal angle, meaning it has almost the same number of bars. So this did a one-to-one -one from the 80.16 high to the uh, 29th of July high of 97.52, pulls back, still the green line was above the, the 14, so it's still positive, and the MACD just a fractionally uh, a flat negative, but it didn't break down. Stochastic pullback very sharply, unbalanced volume. And then it had a move from the low of uh, right here, the, th the 5th of August at 86.28. And the move to the peak C at 101.56 was on the 29th. So it was about three days late for this parallel, Chapman Wave parallel extension, but it did do almost a one-to-one. -one. Then it pulls back sharply, and it, it touches the 200-period moving average on the 26th of September at 83.69, and the high today is, so far, 101.14. So this has done it in a slightly shorter time frame. And this is also that one-to-one. -one. But I'm suspecting that there's another move just above that C to go to a D. And then we get into, and now this is, uh, someone said to me, could you do a, a, a bar symmetry on some charts so we can see how it works? So this is a lot tougher. But I'm going to try to do it here. This is Exxon daily chart that in June had a spike up to the 105. So I'll give you the exact number in a moment. What I do is I love when I can do a perfect one-to-one -one from an absolutely perfect high or low with a, a potential cup formation. There's your cup formation. And that says to get to the high of the 8th of June, at 105.57 in Exxon, a very conservative way, I think it said 87, um, a very conservative way would be just to go to the peak in the middle. This is the biggest, the bigger cup formation, like, like this. Remember, I, I always say sine wave, cup, cup and arch, cup and arch, cup and arch, and this one failed to make a new uh, recovery high right there. And then I see, okay, on a visual basis, it says you'd have to go all the way into maybe September at this particular rate. Well, 
Yeah, you could do that, but the speed with which it's working right now says it's probably in October. Look at that monthly chart. I mean, right there on the right is probably the monthly chart that's telling us higher highs and higher lows that buying pressure is coming into ExxonMobil, multinational oil company. So normally, I, I would love to do it mathematically. Look, the your cup formation. There's the top of the cup. Now I'm going to make another arch. But that just says to me, it's just too far. It can happen. Look, I can't. I have to move to the right. Too many bars. And normally, I would take uh, a trough on the left side, and I do the extension. But everything about this says that the rally, if it's going to continue, could be a much shorter time frame to get to the 105.87 level. So I, I, I have to look at it in a very different way. I have to go to the weekly chart and say, what are the symmetrical aspects that I'm looking at? Well, if I look at the symmetrical aspects, I could do the same thing, but you can see here, it's a little easier to see that this cup formation here and this potential cup formation here with a higher low taking us to a higher high takes you to round about, <clears throat> now I can actually draw this in, right there to right there. And now I'm going to do the right side, make it green. You don't have to have all these colors and everything. You can just do it as a measured move, just with a straight line. I'm going to go there. And I'm going to say, yeah, that's a possibility. So as conservative as, as this looks in the cup, going from a, a, a W, the left side U going to a double U with a second U here, I think it's going to be sooner. But normally I would do this and I'd draw it in and I'd say, okay, that's the pattern in a conservative way. That's the way I'm looking at it. It's already broken every one of those resistance points. My thinking is that it would probably be somewhere around here, this particular week, the week of the 28th of October. It could be sooner, but I'd rather go to the week of the 28th of October and say that's where I think that 105.57 will break. Now, you say, ah, yeah, that's fine for the for the chart patterns, but you've got to look at both sides. What if, yet again, for the for the third time, we get one of those pullbacks, and maybe it does make a new high, maybe it doesn't. It doesn't matter. You've almost you've broken above a one to one to the to the upside. What if Exxon pulls back? Now you've got time on your hands to get to that other side high. So. I like to put those into the package, and I say, okay, well, I've got two aspects. One is a shorter-term one, which says, as it's going right now, since this is gray leg B, which goes immediately to a D at 101.57, I think I said it was, 101.57, yes. And we are so close. We went to 101.14 earlier this morning. I think that there's a chance that we can go higher, and it'll be in a shorter time frame. So that says to me that next week sometime, there's a chance that if this time Exxon doesn't pull back after this almost, it's greater than a one to one to move to the upside, it holds any, uh, this week's low is 98.33. If it holds between 98.50 and 97.30 and then makes a new recovery high in the daily chart, we're going to get to the 105s quicker. So I thought I'd just show you that sometimes it isn't, you have to do a lot of work. Sometimes it's so visually easy that it's just, I mean, like the pattern I showed you here in the uh, in the one-minute chart. I don't know where we are right now because I haven't been looking at it. In the one-minute chart of the E-mini uh, right here. Look, that was just right there. There was a one-to-one -to, -one to the left side, the symmetry, and it came down and hit it. So that's sometimes it's, it's fairly straightforward. And sometimes it's, oh, this bar moved it. I had that bar as coming down a little bit sharper. Not as sharp as that, but going to that. Yes, right there. So, and now we're looking at the 200 period moving average of the one minute chart because it just made a trough F. Oh, wait a minute. Is that an E or an F? A, B, C, okay. E, F, G. It went to a trough G. And you're going peak A. Peak B, peak C. I wish I'd seen this a little earlier because while I was talking, this was making a beautiful, this is a dreaded H pattern. It went under it, but the technicals gave you a fabulous buy mode with on balance volume. Stochastic came back over 20%. The, the um, MACD didn't even uh, close negative. 
And that says, oh, now you've got yourself a potential for a cup formation uh, right there. Right? And where do I make the cup? I go from the left side right here of the little of the peak that this is called the peak, uh, right there on the 200 period moving average. I go to a particular candle uh, that's usually a particular, if it isn't an exact measurement. And then I, I'll click on, I'll be back in a moment, folks. The Dow is down 144, S&P's up 16. We just had a little bit of a bounce. I'll be right back. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I was asked to look at Uber. Uber's trading at 29 29 up 11 cents. My problem with Uber is that that monthly chart has had such a series of dreaded H patterns. That means you got that H pattern that failed back in July of 2021 and took out and went to a lower low, and now you, you're rallying. This is the first time that I see enough strength to say that it should stay in a trading band. Now, the question is that peak G that was made, and I drew this in the other day. I don't know if I did this live, if I was just doing this for myself, but you see how the high was back in August when it went to just under in the 33s at peak F. Look how strong the MACD and stochastic were. But look what happened when it ran to that peak G, the high high in the 34s, around about the, in mid-September. And now uh, it's pulled back to 26 and is trading at this point at 29. So my problem is that this 200 period moving average of 30.94 is such strong resistance. I would probably have to wait for it to hold above it. And then I think it makes its leg D in the weekly chart 
in the in the thirty uh, in the thirty four area, but at this particular point, I just think it's stuck. I just don't see a catalyst technically for it at this point. Um, so it's made low, low, a lower low on this pullback with poor technicals. So at 30, 29, 38, I want to see how it handles the 30, 30, 29, 80 to 30.20 uh, area. If it holds that and then starts to move to 32, I'll say, hey, now it's acting much better. So that's it. So, folks, we're going to be going over to Steve Rhodes. Great programming here all day. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And what's really important about this particular moment by Monday or Tuesday, if we start to see higher highs and higher lows in the general market, that's what you want to see for a more sustained move. A failure with the Dow, which is uh, down 138. If the Dow closes under 29, uh, uh, 29,900 any time between now and Monday, that's saying, uh-oh, it's going to struggle. New highs, new recovery highs would be fabulous. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Stay tuned for the rest of the day.